Oh, and I didn't, and I didn't toot our own horn, but I will say while we're at it, we outperformed Bitcoin. We're up 54%. MicroStrategy stock has outperformed every big tech, 95% of the NASDAQ, all the asset classes, while we've been criticized for losing money on Bitcoin. So why is it saying you guys lost $1.8 billion? There, when uh, Bitcoin got to $50,000 a coin, we sold a billion dollars worth of stock. Yeah. At seven hundred dollars a share, we converted the equity into Bitcoin. Bitcoin traded down, and so technically, the Bitcoin that we bought at, at that point is worth less today. And so you can say that's a non. The one you bought at thirty-two k or thirty-nine k, something like that. You bought it at thirty-nine thousand. If you or? bought Bitcoin more than the current trading price, then you can say that you lost money buying it. Yeah. But if you actually paid for it with cash or equity that was valued proportionate then you've actually created shareholder value. We've actually created enterprise value. The company's enterprise value is expanded by a factor of five. Our shareholders have made, a, made more money than any other investment, so they're all fine. People are just cherry-picking random trading periods in order to make some observation. Mm -hmm. Got it. And then this story here, to, to the Ethereum folks who would love for me to ask you this question. There's no second best. MicroStrategy would be up $1.6 billion if, if it invested in Ethereum. This was a month ago. What are your thoughts on this wonderful uh, article? I can, the problem is Ethereum is a security. I, I mean, the, I, I, look, I don't mean to be mean about it, but, but it's pretty evident Vitalik is the CEO of Ethereum. There is a 10-year roadmap with 160 blocks. One of the little blocks in the roadmap says elect secret leader. Another block is give people the ability to unstake their coin. Another block is set the monetary policy. Like, Ethereum is an incomplete uh, crypto network. It's a work in progress. And so the problem fundamentally is it's a security, which means to promote a security is securities fraud. It's just, it's that simple, right? When you're promoting Ethereum, you're promoting Joe Lubin and Vitalik's company and it's their token there was a pre-mine there's an ico they changed the monetary policy and they currently are holding 20 billion dollars worth of their their investors assets hostage and we don't know when the money will be released so here's the issue at some point the sec is going to deem them a security if they are a security it's illegal to trade them on any exchange you know in the u.s really in the world, right? I mean, and unless someone creates a path to register a digital security. Look, I would have nothing against Ethereum if they said, look, we're a company. This is a security. We're going to register it. Okay, what's the board of directors? Who owns it? What's the rules? Give us all the risk factors. Do, I mean, a very simple question. Do you know who's going to make the decision to give the $20 billion of ETH back? Because there is no representation as to when you'll be able to unstake ETH. It's not clear who makes the decision. Is it one? What happens if that one person disappears? What if they decide to never give you your ETH back? Okay, that, that, that is a problem. So as a publicly traded company, I'm going to make a technical argument. Publicly traded companies can't hold more than 40% of their balance sheet in a security. Like if it was Apple stock and it had 100,000 pages of disclosures... I still couldn't hold more than 40% of my balance sheet in it because, uh, you know, a, a, an operating company can't hold any more securities without becoming an SEC 40 reporting company. It's a totally uh, different thing. So technically, we couldn't buy securities if we wanted to. And, uh, and otherwise, look, Bitcoin's protocol has been pretty much set in stone with a series of only soft forks for 13 and a half, 14 years. Ethereum changes every six months. Those, you know, and so it's a different thing. You know, as for back testing it, I mean, I, I could go back and say, what if I had bought such and such yo-yo coin token too? But, but as I've said, there are 22,000 tokens. Nearly all of them are unregistered securities, which means they're trading illegally, unethically, on, on illegal exchanges. What could go wrong? Like, I, I wouldn't put a penny into any of those tokens. If you said, you know, my cousin Vinny's, you know, got yo-yo dine, and do you want to buy some of the penny stock and just trust me? I was like, no. I mean, it's no different than Boiler Room, right? Or, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street, right? Uh, the Ethereum people have a, they have an aggressive technical ambition, 
but ultimately it's not a complete project. They've got a 10-year roadmap. When it's complete, five years after that, you'll know if it breaks or doesn't break. And at some point, there's the question of, you know, is it decentralized or not? It's pretty obviously not decentralized when you're waiting for the supreme leader to give you the plan.